Welcome back. Well, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention says that the upper Midwest region is a prime location for Lyme disease. Dr. Deborah Muth is a Lyme literate practitioner at Serenity Health Care Center, and she's here with a lot of information about this disease that can be difficult to diagnose. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining me. That was all that was a mouthful to say, you know, and I think Lyme disease is something so many of us have heard of. We think about when we go out hiking, we think about the tick and, and all that. But what is Lyme disease? How do you describe it to someone? Yeah, Lyme disease is known as a spirochetal disease. So we often call it the great imitator and it's the kissing cousin to syphilis because it's a disease that's like a spirochete. So it's a spiral or a corkshoe, uh, corkscrew shaped bacteria that infects us when we get bit by a tick. Okay, so it comes from ticks. Is that the only way that we get it? It is not. That is a misnomer. Um, we've always believed that the only way you could get this infection is from ticks, but there is new research that shows that other insects can carry the infection as well. So where is it from? Because I, you know, as I was introducing this, I mean, I was talking about the upper Midwest kind of being a hot spot. And I think about that, you know, when we think about wooded areas and whatnot, but is that where it originates or is that where it comes from? It's not originally from here. It was first noticed in Connecticut. So there's a prime spot called Lyme, Connecticut, and that's where Lyme disease was originally identified. And it's kind of spread across the whole country over the last 30 years. And, it, and now it can be found pretty much any place in the world. So what are some of the symptoms? When I think of Lyme disease, I think of exhaustion. Mm. Yeah, that's what makes it the great imitator. So initially when you get bit by something that carries Lyme disease, some people will experience flu-like symptoms. So headache, fever, chills, muscle aches and pains. And the classic is what we call a bullseye rash. So it's a rash that looks just like a target bullseye like you would shoot at with a bow and arrow. But unfortunately, only about 20% of the people that get infected with Lyme disease actually will ever see a rash. And if they do, oftentimes they discount that rash and they think, oh, it's just a spider bite, it's not a big deal, and they don't get treatment. And that's where we really start to become problematic because as that infection goes longer, you'll see different symptoms like joint pain and muscle pain and weakness. You can even see some symptoms that mimic MS or ALS in late stage Lyme. So what are some treatments? You know, are you, are you able to just go in and get like a simple blood test for Lyme disease? Is that how you diagnose it? And then mm -hmm. treatment wise, if it's bacteria, I would think we can get rid of it. That is a wonderful question. And unfortunately, our testing is very antiquated. So we do have testing, and according to the CDC, they like to see what we call a two-step process for testing. So you have an initial test, which is like a screening test, and then you have a confirmation test. And if the confirmation test is negative, but the screening test is positive, oftentimes you're diagnosed with a false positive and people don't receive treatment, which is one of the biggest problems that we have because you can have chronic disease without great treatment. The problem is we have hundreds of different species of Lyme disease, but we're still very limited to just one or two really accurate tests for strains. So oftentimes many people are missed. And unfortunately, a lot of doctors will say, even with a bullseye rash, they will not provide antibiotics for patients initially at that onset of the bite, which is what causes more problems because that infection continues to linger and linger and linger, causing chronic problems. And that's where we run into really big issues. So it sounds like it doesn't really go away on its own. You, you truly have to treat it. And my guess is you have to see a specialist. Correct. You can't, this will not just go away on its own without some form of treatment. You can use antibiotics. You can use herbal combinations. We love to use both herbs and antibiotics together. But if you don't treat it, it will not go away. And there is some research based on the ILADS, uh, International Lyme Disease Association, that says even if we treat it, it is very difficult to go away because it's the kissing cousin to syphilis. It will need some form of treatment almost for that person's lifetime to keep it at bay. So how can we prevent it? You know, if, the, if this is from a, a bug or a bite, is it wearing some sort of bug spray or something? 
Wearing bug spray is really good. Um, DEET is something that a lot of people recommend. Promethean is something that you can recommend. We don't recommend spraying those directly on your skin. They are a toxin, but you can spray them on your clothes. There's clothes that you can get that are already pre-treated. So if you're somebody who works in the woods or you're in the woods a lot, you can get pre-treated clothing. There are wonderful essential oil mixtures that you can either make yourself or you can purchase and you can put directly on your skin. And then certainly having things like, um, there's some really great uh, essential oils made by cutters, which is like a fogger that you can use to spray your yard that keeps the ticks down. Certainly keeping the grass cut, that helps. Um, wearing light clothing so that if you are out in the woods, you can tick check and you can make sure you're looking for things right away. And then you can get them off of you before they're on and attached for too long. Is it more than just a deer tick that carries it? I know you mentioned other bugs, but when we think about ticks, mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the thought that most of us have heard. Right, the thought is, and based on the CDC guidelines, it is only the deer tick that carries this infection. However, there is new research that shows that it is not just the deer tick that carries this infection, that other ticks can carry the infection as well. And, and doctor, can people see you? I assume it's more, more prevalent than we think. It is more prevalent. So according to the CDC, about 300,000 new cases of Lyme disease every year are happening. Now, mind you, that's with the antiquated testing that we have. Last year alone in Wisconsin, we recorded 1,200 cases. Those statistics are going to be skewed because not every case gets reported to the health department, and so therefore it doesn't get into our system. But there are many cases, especially people who have been sick for many, many years with things like fibromyalgia or lupus or MS, that end up finding out that what they originally had before those diagnoses were Lyme disease. Mm. I'm going to give the information so everybody can, can learn more about what you do and see a specialist if they've got questions as well. Thanks so much for joining me, doctor. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. You too. And here's the information for Serenity Healthcare. They're located at serenityhealthcarecenter.com online or 262-522-8640 is the phone number to call.